Welcome, my name is Phoenix, and welcome to Classics Month on the Consumer's Guide to Filmmaking. Ringu, or as you would probably know it better as The Ring, 1998, Hideo Nakata. This film tells the tale of a journalist named Riko Asakawa, investigating rumors of a cursed videotape that caused the deaths of four teenagers she stumbles on the aforementioned videotape and watches it. Receiving a phone call just after, she now has seven days left to live per the rules of the curse. She and her ex-husband must now try to stop... To, she and her ex-husband must now try to lift the curse before they and their son die. I dug this movie quite a bit. I dug it a lot more than the Verbinski movie. This is a solid little horror caper. And what I think this film does better than the remake is that it is super efficient. It, it doesn't fuck around on fluffy nonsense or boring prattle. It sets the problem up, and every scene is one where the characters are trying to find a solution. On the note of characters, they are well acted and they are dynamic enough for an hour and a half film. Nakata manages to give you enough info about their lives and develops them so you remain attached and you root for them. We see this divorced couple in this film reuniting and bonding over this quest to save each other and their child who watched the tape and it is honestly quite riveting. And from a technical perspective too, this film is no slouch, it's pretty damn good. The score is what I think took me aback. The nice variety of tones and styles from coarse strings and sharp percussion to pleasant synth music. The score it manages to match the tone for each scene like a T and remain engaging. The special effects and makeup for what they were going for was pretty great. The film focused more I find on atmosphere and tension and we didn't see any gory kills or many loud jump scares. It was tame, and yet I was still spooked when Sadako, Samara, whatever you want to call her, came out of the TV at the end, because they presented it well, and at the right time. And, I'm gonna say this now, that scene was slicker than the Verbinski version, and I will stand by that till the day I fucking die. However, the cinematography, the editing, while periodically really good, wasn't anything too spectacular. I wasn't enamored by many of the shots or the lighting or the angles. It was fairly standard. Overall, this was a very fun watch. If, you're on if you've only seen the Verbinski version, you owe this version of viewing. Because I think it is superior in pretty much every respect. Recommended. And I'm feeling an 8 out of 10 on this one. Stefan, take it away. Yo, 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 this is your boy Stefan. If you made it to this part of the video, you know you just watching a fly ass review by my man Phoenix. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Pass these videos around. Also, make sure to follow this channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, all that stuff. Links to those will be in the description. And man, if you like what's going on here, if you want Phoenix to keep doing his thing, man, you gotta donate to our Patreon and subscribe star pages. That way, you can get all sorts of extra content that's just straight up baller. Yo, this is your boy Stefan, signing out. Peace!